And pretty colors, too. Oh. Hi. Hello. Huh? Another one. Electrical motors work on the principle that current carrying conductors experience a force in a magnetic field. The force would be a maximum if it's linear to the magnetic field and zero when it's parallel to the magnetic field. We see a north and south pole in the figure as magnetic fields. We see that the yellow part is the rotor. At the back of this there is a split directional communicator with two small graphite plates. The graphite plates would cause the rotor to shift, hereby giving it a direction to turn on. If you change the polarity of the electrical motor, you would find that it turns in the opposite direction. A rotor is a spill with a soft iron core on which there is winds of copper wire the soft iron core with this spill is called the anchor or the rotor. Both sides of this rotor experience forces which are in opposite directions. That then causes a rotational force. On this rotor there is a split directional communicator which is connected to graphite plates. There would be a communicator for each coil of the anchor. More of these coils cause the motor to have less friction and a faster turning force can be created. They should both have isolated copper winds to cause the cylindrical neck to move. The electricity enters on the graphite plates which are mounted onto the same axle as the split directional communicators and turns. Each one of the communicators cause a 180 degree direction change in each of the coils. The magnetic current is hereby turned by the coil. The graphite plates which are called the brushes presses against the communicator these brushes then deliver the current from and to the battery. If you change the terminals, the motor will change direction. The current of a motor depends on the magnetic labor it performs. When the motor is spinning freely, it creates its own oppositional EMF, which is approximately the same as the source that loads it. Because of this oppositional EMF, the motor needs a lot less current to keep it turning. But as soon as this motor needs to perform labor, then this oppositional EMF is decreased, and the current that it needs also increases. We can also create a motor from an electromagnet. This magnet is called the stator and it doesn't move. We get two types, series wound and shunt wound. Series wound motors are used in applications that need high torque. A typical example is a starter in a car. The starter would apply itself on how it's needed. On the other hand, a motor with a constant friction and a constant speed, we would use a shunt wound motor. The power source is also connected in parallel to the anchor and coil. As burden increases, the anchor speed would then decrease. This then decreases oppositional EMF. The current then needs to increase for the anchor and wind. Because of this, the motor would have a constant speed at different charges. So shunt wound motors can therefore be used in washing machines because they use alternating current applications. To change the direction, one can then just change the connections to the, the field coils so the washing machine would move back and forth. Motors without brushes or communicators can then be used with alternating current. Examples of these are devices that are used in household plugs. This current changes direction every hundredth of a second. Therefore you want to build motors that turn as the momentum of the alternating current variates. They are therefore called synchronous motors. 
they move at a very constant speed and therefore electrical clocks use them and then things like turning tables which require constant velocity the motor won't turn by itself it needs a special capacitor which is connected to it to make it turn this capacitor is automatically disrupted as soon as the motor starts working all motors are therefore generators so if you then turn a motor then electricity would be generated When a coil is turned in a magnetic field, it generates an EMF according to the changing position by which the coil alternates. Note that alternating current is transported through slip rings to external components. They are two round copper rings on the same axle, but they are isolated from each other. Look again at the split directional communicator of a direct current and compare it to this picture. A graph generated for the volt against time has the same axle as a sinus graph. When the source EMF is connected to the circuit, it delivers a current through the circuit, which differentiates exactly the same as the differentiating EMF. In an alternating current circuit, the current carriers move very fast backward and forward, approximately at 50 Hz. Capacitors are apparatus that can store charges. When it is completely loaded, one plate has a charge plus Q and another minus Q. In a direct current circuit, the capacitor would block current. There is initially a short flow of current until it is fully loaded and then the current stops. The diagram shows how you can observe loading a capacitor. A high resistance voltmeter is used. The capacitor is then loaded through a resistor to slow the charging time. The graph voltage on time has an exponential curve. The voltage rises quickly and then slows down. In an alternating current, it looks like a capacitor lets current flow through. The alternating current causes the capacitor to be loaded in an alternating fashion. It would have the same frequency as the current. With the light, it looks like the current is passing through the capacitor. The diagram shows an alternating current which is connected, a lamp and capacitor connected in series. When we switch it on, it looks like the lamp is burning and moves through the capacitor. Let's say we have a few solenoids with a lot of winds which is connected to a battery through a switch. When the circuit is switched on, the current starts moving through it. The current immediately induces the magnetic field around the coils. As the current builds up, so does the magnetic field. But the changing magnetic field induces an EMF in its own coils which works against current. This is called Lenz's law. But the current is decreased through opposing EMF. If the current is switched off, the magnetic field starts to drop. It induces an EMF which tries to maintain the original current. The EMF is proportional to the changing current in the coil. So we will get to the formula minus L equals delta I on delta T. The proportional constant L is called the inductance of the coil. And the coil is called the inductor. And the minus comes from Lenz's law. If we compare two circuits, one with an inductor and one with a coil, in circuits with a lamp, we adjust both so the lamp shines brightly in both. This circuit is then switched on and off. You will then see that the lamp connected to the inductor takes long to burn. It's because the inductor slows current and current is built up. The inductance of an inductor depends on the number of winds in the coil and the nature of the core. It's the material the winds are around. Soft iron, for example, increases the inductance due to concentrating the magnetic field. Just like energy that is stored in a capacitor can be assumed as energy that is energy between the two plates, the energy of an inductor can be assumed as energy that the coil stores. Most inductors have very low or very low ohmian resistance. If it was only this resistance that restricted flow of the current, it would burn out the primary wind around the coil of a transformer due to very high current it switched on with. The opposing EMF only balances the EMF applied and keeps the current to a minimum. 
The characteristic of an inductor to resist current is called impedance.